friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today for another Monday This and That vlog where I talk about all kinds of different topics, maybe leading you back to some old videos, letting you know some yet to come, answering a few questions that may have come in in the past week or so, and whatever I feel like talking about. So let's get to the topics of today, starting with the dehydrated bananas. So I, um, I will be doing a separate, more in-depth video just on this, but I wanted to cover some of this today. And you'll see that when you dehydrate bananas, they don't have the same kind of texture or color as bananas that you might buy the banana chips. And these are just plain bananas. They're gonna be a little bit flexible. I've done nothing to these, but just slice them and dehydrate them. They're also going to turn just a little bit of color, you know, a little bit darker than what you're gonna see. Well, that's just the normal oxidation. It doesn't mean that they taste bad. In fact, they taste quite good. I love dehydrated bananas. However, if the color, if you'd like to keep them a more vibrant color, one of the things you can do is brush a little lemon juice onto the slices and then dehydrate them and that will help them hold their color. You can use really any kind of juice, but uh, lemon juice in this case is better because some juice is gonna have so much sugar in it, it makes it even more sticky and take longer to dehydrate. But in that case, I do highly recommend you use the silicone sheets like you can see in the picture, which I still did use because bananas are just high in sugar anyway. And so they do tend to be a little bit more sticky and harder to remove from the stainless steel racks or if you got plastic, you know, if you just got mesh, it can be harder to get them off of there, especially when you use juice. So what I did was I dehydrated them at 125 degrees and I did use the silicone sheets for a while. When I thought they were dry, I took them all off, laid them out, let them cool so I could check them and found a lot of them were still pretty sticky. So I stuck them because you'll feel it when they feel stick. They're going to be flexible, but if they feel sticky, then they need to dry a little bit more with bananas. That's the case. Not some stuff will always feel sticky depending on what it is. And then, um, and if you put juice on it, it's still going to be sticky. So if you just dry, dehydrate them dry without anything on them, uh, they, they should feel dry when they're done, um, but still be flexible. So then at that point, I just laid them directly on the stainless steel racks because at that point I wasn't worried about them sticking to them and then let them finish drying. So I dehydrated at 125 for about 12 hours ish. Uh, we had a few things uh, like I had it plugged into solar and the baby ended up unplugging it. And so I don't know how long it was unplugged and yeah, it kind of threw everything out of whack. So I'm not positive on the time, but it's just one of those things you just got to check and keep an eye on. So I did try the coconut oil method to see if that would make them crispy like the kind you can buy, the banana chips. Well, they must do something else because this is what happened to mine. <laughs> first, what happened was I was doing this in my, the first batch in my Nesco, my final last Nesco, and the motor died in the middle of the process. And I thought, well, they're mostly dry, so I'm just going to stick them in the oven. And I, I put the oven at about 300 degrees. Well, they're only in there for 15 minutes and they turned to brown. They almost burnt. So obviously because of the oil. And they're still soft. They're, they're actually, they took longer to dry. They're, more, they're not even as firm as the ones that I dried without the coconut oil. So that didn't work, but at least I tried now I know. Um, these taste okay they're just they taste kind of well done not burnt necessarily but while i was at it because i still had space on my nesco when i was doing this other batch that i went ahead and threw a couple peaches on there which i've done peaches before but i also decided to try an experiment i have some gold kiwi that i decided to dry up and these taste pretty good so it was just a just a way to fill up the dehydrator and also be able to sample some stuff so i just took one kiwi and yes i left the skin on and uh i actually leave the skin on when i eat the kiwi i just wash it and then slice it and eat it because there's good stuff in that skin you can eat it so but yeah these turned out pretty good and it smells really good too i like i find i like the golden kiwi better than the um green ones myself oh and then of course i vacuum sealed the bananas into the jars and so 
the thing about bananas I found though, most dehydrated stuff will last for many years, vacuum sealed in jars. One thing I found out about bananas is even if they keep their seal, vacuum sealed, it's still best to consume them within a year. Once they sit past that time, they kind of, the flavor changes, or they seem to take on a stale flavor, even vacuum sealed. And I don't know what it is about the bananas. They're the only thing I found that really does that where other things can last for quite a number of years, you know, apples and so much more. And then I had a, a question, I've covered this in another video that I'll link to down below, but somebody was asking me if I compost and how I compost. I don't have any special method, like some people have bins, you know, things that turn their compost or just special types of things that they compost in. I don't do things that way. I actually just do it the more natural and very, very simple way. Just like the banana peels that I didn't use to make vinegar because I got a lot of vinegar going already and a lot of vinegar in my um, cabinet back there. I just took a lot of those peels and I throw them out into the garden so they can break down naturally because banana peels are high in minerals and a lot of good nutrients that your plants can feed off of. So those all just went out in the garden. And uh, I do the same thing with any of my kitchen scraps. I just throw them out there and what the chickens won't eat or work through, that just breaks down. So it's kind of a win-win for them. And uh, yeah, that's just, that's how I do my compost. It's very simple. But I do have other amendments that I do for the soil. So I'll link to that video I did a year or so ago and you can check that out. And then I wanted to bring up again the remastered videos that have been coming out that will be, that will be coming out every Wednesday for at least until the end of December. And the last two that came out were the ones from 2017. They were comedy ones that all started off as a YouTube challenge from Keeping It Dutch was the one that started it and several other channels picked up on it and challenged each other. And it was Texas Boys that challenged Patrick for the can opener one. And then, um, then there was the Firestarter one. I don't remember who challenged him with that one, but it was somebody in the same group of people <laughs> that were doing these. But at any rate, if you paid attention to the can opener one, I'm not gonna give too much away in case you haven't watched these, but I'll link to both of them down below. But you would have seen this hanging around Patrick's neck and that was a joke. He obviously did that. He made sure to focus in on it. Some people might not have picked that up or might not have realized that he knew that was hanging there. Yes, he did. That was part of the joke. But a lot of people assume that this is a P38, but they'd be wrong. And I know a lot of you are going, what? What? So that's a P38. Certainly I was in the military. I know what a P38 is. Well, you're close. This is actually called a P51. It's a little bit bigger than the P38. And so I got a bunch of these because um, even though I like my other hand can opener, the you know, with the nice handle, it's a lot easier to use. These are nice because they're portable. You can keep them in your purse. You can, you know, keep them tied around your neck or whatever, and they're handy. But these are just a little bigger than the P38, which means they're actually a little bit easier to use. And I've even opened a number 10 can using one of these. And uh, anyway, maybe one of these days I need to, for you ladies out there that don't know how to use one of these, maybe I should do a video demonstration to show you. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Very cheap, you can find a, I think we bought like set, a pack of a bunch of them for a few dollars years ago on Amazon. So if I can find that link again or one like it, I'll go ahead and put that down below. Cause that is something that's great that you can just keep in anything in case you ever need a can up and of course a lot of cans if it's not your own home can stuff a lot of store-bought canned goods are have the peel top on them anyway oh and then the other thing i was going to talk about is that i um in the remaster videos i do have i redid most of my skirt video so i i just redid the frontier skirt one with the solid skirt because a lot of people have been seeing me make the linen skirts and they're just solid uh, it's made very much the same way and but that video i just remastered it and i do suggest you wait until that one comes out because as i was watching it i realized because some things back then especially I, a lot of times i would lose whole clips because the camcorder i was using would it would just uh corrupt my files and then i couldn't do anything with them and it was so frustrating so i kind of rearranged that video i shortened it down from like 25 minutes down to like 15 minutes took out a lot of unnecessary stuff 
just to make it smoother, added in some information. So that's going to publish, I think, in September. So we got a while yet, but um, I suggest watching that one when it comes out. But I also redid the first three in the Patchwork Skirt series. So those will be coming out. I did those first, so those will be publishing before the Frontier Skirt one. But um, with that, I also wanted to say a lot of people have been asking me where I got my linen. Well, um, I did get it on Amazon. I'll give you the link. And if you buy it in the two yard pieces, it's the best price I could come across per yard. Now, I did find a place online that claims to be an American small family business and they get all their flax linen from Europe. Um, anymore, I don't trust even websites like that. And I'm working with them right now. They, they seem to have the best price on linen. But um, I'm going to get back to you on that before I share who it is because um, it's been a week since I placed my order and they immediately charged my credit card, but they have yet to ship it out. Now, it could be that it just they're busy and it might take time to get everything cut and shipped, but I haven't heard anything yet. I've been trying to communicate with them and I haven't heard anything back. So before I share my experience with them and even share the link, I want to make sure they are legit and maybe it's just things are taking time and you know things happen things get busy so just be watching hopefully by next week i can give you an update on that so i can share that company link but until then i'll give you the link to the amazon you know where i bought the linen they they have several colors uh unfortunately they didn't have black which is another reason why i was looking elsewhere to try to find a good price on black linen 100% linen but I will say this again I am absolutely in love with the linen skirts they're the best skirts ever and now it's like I want all my skirts to be linen but that is just it is very expensive to do so we'll see <laughs> and we'll see I, that's probably going to take a little bit here and a little bit there kind of thing and then the last thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people have asked us about the product list and I appreciate that if you're interested in the things that we make and we sell, which unfortunately is no longer, I don't make and sell the aprons or the skirts, any sewing related th things. I still sew, but I only do that for myself because of time and ever since I damaged my knee over a year ago, it's healed, but it'll never be the same. So I try not to put that kind of stress on it using the treadle machine. As like I used to because that's kind of what led up to the weakening of the knee and then then the injury that I caused and so that's one of the big reasons why I'm not doing that but we still make and sell other products now what's happened is some people have emailed me asking for a product list and I suspect their emails were the ones that ended up in spam and before I realized it and I'm cleaning out my spam folder and then I see a product list, oh, and by then and, you know, I just happen to catch a glimpse of somebody asking for a product list because normally all I get in spam is a bunch of spam, you know, a bunch of people wanting to collaborate with me, you know, businesses. And so I just, you know, I trash, I'm trying to get better at really looking through my spam folders to see what's in there. So it's hard to say how many emails have been deleted so if i haven't responded to you usually i'm right really quick right away except on saturdays i usually respond right away and so uh if you if it's been several days or a week and you haven't heard from me just email me again and i'll i'm getting better at checking my spam folder so that way anyway i just i just send out the product list it's a list of all the things that we make and the prices and also how to um, how to place your order since we no longer have Etsy and I won't go back to Etsy or any other kind of online store. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my this and that for the week and thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.